Okay, so um, we're back here for the next course about Jagen Harp Tao. So um, we had some remarks after uh, the last course, just some very basic things. Um, just wanted to highlight that the position in which you play the Jagen Harp is personal. Um, I personally like to create a distance between myself and the instrument, so I, I will mostly look in front of me and then uh, only once in a while glance. Uh, some people kind of slant it a little bit and then play like this. And some people really like to play it up close, right? So one thing you can experiment with if you have the cello spike is to see how high you position it. So if you want to have it right next to you or if you want to have it totally beneath you and play like that. This is really up to you. You have to experiment with what feels comfortable. Um, because there are some positions, like so for you, it hurts your neck if you put if you play in a certain position. Um, there are some things that you have to be aware of, though, um, which is already mentioned that in the first uh, in the previous course. Um, to be able to play with expression, you need to be able to move freely. So, if your hand is close to the instrument, you don't have room to move your fingers. You can't really move freely. So that's also why guitar players typically, uh, when you learn classical guitar, they tell you to open everything up to make it round so that you have uh, space to move. Another thing, and we saw that um, when Natalie was trying to do the scales in the previous video, is that if you don't clip your fingernails, you will have a hard time actually hitting the keys in a perpendicular fashion, meaning that you accidentally hit other keys and that you can't get uh, good pressure or force going. Right? And then there is a final thing here, um, when you use the switches at the bottom, I personally, and this is just a personal thing, um, but I think it is a good, a a good uh, approach to start off with, is when you press the switch here, I always use my pinky, so that I can use my other three fingers to actually select uh, which mode I'm going into. Um, I typically actually also use my ring finger here to use the bottom keys and my index finger to use the upper keys, meaning that um, I don't have to contract my hand to try to select with my index here. It is kind of uncomfortable to do that. So I try to keep kind of a fixed position here. This is of course up to you, um, but I, it might be useful to some people to, to have this as a guideline. Um, so that's that's that. Something else that I wanted to mention is um, since we were talking about scales and um, tonics, so we're in, in C major again here. There are two keys in orange here at the bottom that allow you to change also the notes that you're playing on the eigenharp, and they allow you to change the octave in which you're playing. So you can hear that I've got this C. If I press this note, so you've got two two keys at the bottom. If you use the one that's uh, to the outside, you move the, oc the octave up. If you use the one that's closest to you, you move the octave down. So this can allow you to, to go to other ranges without necessarily having to move your hand uh, across the eigenharp. Uh, you don't have to press... Uh, no, then you don't key. have to press the switches. It's always... It, it's always uh, here and always active, yes. So, now a little bit of terminology, and you will see that if you go to your uh, quick reference guide. So, uh, if you go to pa page 8, so I'm kind of skipping over all the first pages, because I think what most people want is to start playing immediately, and then afterwards you can delve into the more uh, detailed sections. So, we looked at page 9 before to actually, uh, actually page 10 it was, to, to change the scales and the tonics. Now we're at page 8, um, so you could see the octave down and the octave up buttons here. Um, and something that is mentioned a lot of times when talking about an eigenharp, it's called a key group. And a key group is basically an area on your keyboard, and this goes from here to here, right? This area is a group of keys that plays the same instrument, right? This is all piano. And if I want to change what this does, I use a key that's called a key group mode key. I change the mode that is active for those keys, right? So this switch that we've been using is called the key group mode key. And it changes the instrument? It can be used to change the instrument, but what we've done is to change here, to change the tonics, 
and to change the scales, right? Mm -hmm. And also to change the instrument, because when we were in scale selection mode, this didn't do anything. To be able to go back to the piano, actually you always selected the first instrument here, right? So you change the mode that is active for this key group, mm -hmm. okay? So we touched on the piano. Let's now look at what other instruments are available, right? So this section is actually the section that you will use the most on the Eigen Harp Tau. Um, and it is divided a bit strangely. You actually have this part and that part are very different. So this part, apart from this key that allowed you to change the tonic, this part is to change the instrument that is active, right? So the sound. This part is to change tonic, scale, uh, drum loops, recordings. It's more to interact with uh, more additional functionalities that haven't got anything to do with sound or with instruments, right? So, so this is four, two rows of four, mm -hmm. and one first upper three keys here. So you've got 11 in total, okay? Those are sounds that are mm -hmm. active. So for example, this was a piano, right? If I use this one, I have to use the breath pad. If I use this one, it's kind of a synth pad thing that morphs. Right? And this one, I don't, I don't think it's, it's empty at the moment. So those four uh, in, the out, in the outer row, honestly, and this is sadly something quite technical, those are called sound fonts. You will probably not use them very much in the beginning, apart from the piano. Why? Because sound fonts uh, are a format that aren't very, uh, very much in use anymore. You can't easily find newer instruments made with sound fonts. Um, there is a good reason why the Eigenharp uses them. It's because we can uh, use them to get a lot of expressive expressiveness out of it immediately. You don't have to set up anything, right? But it's very difficult to find good new sound fonts. So most people will actually, if you want to start uh, selecting new sounds and your own sounds, you will work with the second row here, right? Yeah, rows or columns, it kind of depends. Some people call this a row, some people call this a column. It's what, in this case, for me, goes from, for from, from, the, from this end to that end, right? Uh -huh. So it goes this direction. Um, so that's a column for most people. Um, I call that a row, <laughs> because I look at it differently. Um, I look at it from left to right, because mm -hmm. I watch at the Eigenharp from this side. So it's, from uh, here, it's... Yeah, it's for you it's a column, it's and for, uh, me it's, it's <laughs> for me it's a row. Yeah. <laughs> so, so well, yeah, anyway. Um, so it goes from top to bottom in this case, if, you ha if your Eigenharp is like that. But you could play it like this, right, when it hangs off your strap, and then it's horizontal. So mm -hmm. and I, and I look at it that way, anyway. So this second column for you mm -hmm. is using plugins and plugins that can be uh, any plugin that you find on the internet so it's an audio unit on a vst that's called so these are plugins that you can find that work with logic that work with cubase that work with actually any application that typically runs on a computer and where you can use new sounds with it those are called audio units or vsts so if you if you're looking on on the internet for sounds that you want to buy or to listen to, it's probably the easiest to look for those that are audio units or VSTs. And those are also the ones that you will find. Those are the ones that are most common. And so when you uh, get the Eigenharp, there is one audio unit and VST included in it. And that's called Alchemy. So you can hear, this is a very basic, basic sound. Why is that? It, because it's the default standard sound of alchemy. So let's now go to the screen here. So we 
had Agendi, you're just running, we never did anything with it. Um, but you can go to a menu here, which is the window menu, and you can see that I've got Alchemy Instrument Audio Units mm -hmm. present. So I can click on that, and then you will see Alchemy appear. Now this is not the version that ships with the Eigenharp, this is the one that I bought because you can upgrade it and get the full version. The version that ships with the Eigenharp is a little bit more restricted, but it's still got most of the same sounds. So this is the default basic sound, right? And then, and this is sadly or luckily, it kind of depends on how you look at it, each audio unit has its own way of working with sounds. Right? So in this case, I have a drop-down where I can select the factory sounds and then I have bass sounds, keys, leads, organs, strings, synth sounds. Let's say I can, for example, uh, use a, a lead sound, which is a synthesizer lead, and then I can select something from the leads. And you can hear the sound change. Right? So, um, that is something that you basically have to experiment with. If you're looking for new sounds, either you use, for example, Alchemy that ships with the Eigenharp, which has uh, a bunch of sounds that comes with it, you go through them and you find which sound you like. Okay? That's one part of it. So, um, as you saw, let's go back, let's go back to... to, to, to to, um, to the tau here. So if you use the key group mode key, we've been using this upper key of that row or column. <laughs> right? The other three mm -hmm. slots, the other three keys, allow you to use additional plugins, additional audio units or additional VSTs. So you can have four plugins loaded at the same time. And they can be different ones. So in the next uh, uh, lesson, I'll show you how to actually load new plugins. Um, but for now, let's, let's go to one of the most difficult parts, I think, of the Eigenharp. And that is, when you press a key on the Eigenharp, it moves in three dimensions, right? So you can press on it, you can go up, down, and left, right, okay? This information has to be transmitted to that plugin, has to be transmitted to whatever makes the sound, right? Now, sadly, there is no real standard that is able to um, transfer all the data from the Eigenharp. There's too much. It's too detailed, it's too expressive mm -hmm. for MIDI. MIDI is too restricted. So, sadly, you actually have to do some of the work yourself. So that means that each plugin, so you can see this Alchemy plugin here, at the top left has got a button that's called Configure. Right? This allows you to change how the information from the keys are being transformed to be used by the plugin. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you click on configure and then you get this thing that looks very technical, right? You get this grid of stuff. Now, by default, we set up some things that are working well with Alchemy, right? So you can see these green uh, squares that are highlighted. These are the configurations that are active, mm -hmm. right? What I'm going to do now is to remove them all. So you can have this button here at the top again, where you can do clear all, and I'm going to remove them all so that nothing is active. Okay? Okay. And I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to go to another button here, which is settings, just to show you what the global settings are for that plugin. So settings brings up this window, and it has two things active standard, which is pretty normal. It's nothing strange about that. If you press a key, you want to hear a note. I want to hear C when I press on this. I want to hear D when I press on this note. So that's a note. And also, if I move the key up and down, I want to change the pitch as if I would be vibrating on a string of a guitar or a violin, right? 
and that is called pitch bend. So usually people want pitch bend active to be able to be expressive. Mm -hmm. However, just as I said in the previous tutorial, um, when you start with the eigenharp, pitch bend can be a little bit uncomfortable because you're not used to hit the keys in the middle. So you might kind of hit it on the side and then you get this out of tune sound. So a lot of people in the beginning will probably go to this settings section and turn pitch bend off. And now this doesn't happen anymore. Okay? Right? So that means that you will be playing with a plug-in sound instead of a piano sound. You have not much expression. You only have your force in with which you hit it. And you can't make wrong notes by accidentally hitting it to the sides. Okay? Have any Just questions? Like Just like a piano. Like yes. mm -hmm. You have any questions about that? No. Okay. It's okay. So I think that that is a good way to get started with audio units and VSTs with these plugins. Mm -hmm. Because um, most of them are designed for this. Basically, like a key that you press on a traditional keyboard without any expression that you can put into it. Right? Because here the expression is located with each key and you haven't developed the muscles in your fingers yet. If you don't turn this off in the beginning, you will be able a lot you will be making a lot of strange noises because you'll you know accidentally hit it on the sides. So that is something you want to turn off. And also do the clear all so that you don't have anything active here. And then you can basically go through all the sounds and you know kind of try what you like what you try to yes i'm to so i'm so used i'm so, so used to putting in the pitch band and this, <laughs> but i actually do it on the piano also when i'm playing on the piano i'm doing it like this and it doesn't do anything but alchemy has got a lot of nice sounds uh, for example this this guitar where is that one um, is it that one? Is it? <laughs> so that kind of opens up this world of uh, audio units and VSTs to, to the Eigenharp um, as a first step. And then in the later lesson, I'm not sure if it's going to be the next one, but in one of the later lessons I'll start explaining how to actually put expression in there how to be able to work with pitch bend. Initially, you'll just turn it on, but then how to be able to get the most out of it so that you can get pitch bend on each note independently. But we'll keep that for uh, next lesson. Any questions about this? No? No. Okay, no. well, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>